What's up folks, it's CrossSG back with a new mod recommendation list. So it's been a while since I've done one of these and as I explained in my last video, I don't do these often because I tend to prefer a more vanilla plus or vanilla enhanced experience, so I'm not super adventurous with the major gameplay altering mods and stuff. That's not to say I don't have a ton of mods installed by the way. I have a couple of hundred mods installed at any given time but it's a couple of hundred of mostly smaller mods and the little things kind of add up if you get what I mean. And of course, this might be a new list on my channel, but it doesn't mean that all the mods on this list are necessarily new. I will also not be including any lighting mods on this list for obvious reasons. I prefer to do dedicated lighting mod showcases and I've done quite a few, so I'll link them in the description or at the end of the video. Okay, new mod recommendations. As always, I'll be grouping the mods into a few categories, go over each category, each mod, give you a brief overview, throw in some in-game footage if possible, and this one looks like it's gonna be a longer video, so of course, timestamps, as always, to help you jump around each section of the video. Otherwise, remember to always read the description sections of every mod you install, and always check that you have all the required mods installed as well whenever you're downloading a mod. I'll link my basic modding guide in the description for those new to modding. And without further ado, let's start with some general visual mods. And first up, we have a trio of mods that carry a little gore warning. It's not for the most sensitive viewers. So we have the Blood Egg Hanst series of mods by the author Egg. And these are three mods, Blood Puddles Enhanced, Blood FX Enhanced, and Higher Chance Dismemberment. So blood Puddles Enhance does exactly what the name says. It gives Blood Puddles completely new textures and effects, as well as increases how long Blood Puddles stay spawned. Blood Effects Enhance focuses more on the splatter side of Blood Effects. You know, what happens when Bullet or Blade unites with the enemy. Splashes, miss, squirts, yeah, it's all there. And Higher Chance Dismemberment nicely round things off by increasing the frequency of the dismemberment mechanic when hitting targets, because why not, right? So Blood Puddles Enhance has no mod requirements, it has two variants, the main variant titled as Egg Enhanced Blood Puddles, and the second variant titled as Option 2. As far as I understand it, Option 2 just makes the Blood Puddles darker, versus the main file which is way more red. Now, Blood FX Enhance has five requirements, and don't worry, all of them are very common mod resources. We have Archive Excel, Cyber Engine Tweaks, Red 4 Extension, Red Script, and Tweak Excel. Blood FX has four main variants. The main version is titled as Enhanced Blood FX V2. We then have the balanced version, which reduces some of the effects for those who have stability problems and such. And then we have the red blood version, which makes all blood red. For those who don't know, cyber blood is actually white by default. So this one makes all blood red. And lastly, we have the balanced version of the red blood version, which then reduces some of the effects for the sake of stability. Now, a quick note is that to my understanding, the blood puddle files are actually included in all variants except for the main version. So if you run the main file, then you can install both Blood FX and Blood Puddle, both mods. But if you install any of the other three, the Blood Puddles are already included. You don't need to install the Blood Puddles mod. And lastly, Higher Chance Dismemberment. It has four requirements, Cyber Engine Tweaks, Red 4 Extension, Red Script, and Tweak Excel. And it just has one file option. All right, so still in the general visual category, we have three small visual enhancement mods, all by the same author, Sosuin. Starting with the light beams fix, and this fixes the issue of light beams kind of going missing from spotlights after the 2.0 patch. With this mod installed, now most spotlights properly project beams of light in the distance. Light beams fix has just one file and it doesn't have any mod requirements. Next, we have Alternative Eye Material, and if this sounds kind of familiar, it's because So Suin is also the author of the very popular Alternative Skin Material mod. Alternative Eye Material introduces a couple of subtle changes to the eyes, namely better reflection clarity 
and adjustments to that artificial glare effect that we sometimes get on eyes. The changes are very subtle, so I hope the footage sufficiently captures it. But what I will say is after playing with the mod enabled for a while, you'll just hit some random cutscene and it'll like crop in on character's face and you'll be like, whoa, is it just me or do the eyes look better now? Anyway, Alternative Eye Material has no requirements and just one main file. It does have two optional files, which are just meant to be patches if you happen to be using the mod called Unique Eyes Core. If you don't use that mod, you don't need to worry about the two optional files. This mod should be compatible with any eye texture mod that you use, as long as it's just a texture mod. And in the same alternative vein, we have Alternative Hair Material, and this one alters how light scatters across hair. In English, it just gives hair better lighting and shadows, which in turn makes hair look better overall. Alternative Hair Material has no mod requirements and only one file. It is also compatible with the very popular Prem Hair mod by the Cyanide X, so no worries running them together. All footage you see here is with both mods enabled. Okay, last in the general visual section, we have a texture enhancement mod, and this one is actually a relatively new mod. It's called Environment Textures Overhaul by Nigees. I'm going to just call it ETO for ease of use. And what this does is it replaces a whole bunch of environment textures with remade higher fidelity ones. Environmental textures are things like architectural textures, building materials, roads, pavements, terrain and such. Now it also includes new microblends, and microblends are generally the really small detail stuff like dust, dirt, small cracks and creases in the material. Now, some of you might be wondering how this mod differs from other texture upscale mods like HD Rework Project or Zilla Monsters Texture Upscales. To risk oversimplifying things, and I do apologize to the authors if I'm speaking in error here, I'm not very technical when it comes to these things, HD Rework Project and Zilla Monsters mods are largely upscale textures, meaning the base textures are upscaled to a higher resolution, either manually or through AI, which then increases the sharpness and it increases the detail of the original textures. ETO, on the other hand, remakes a lot of the textures, which not only increases the resolution, but in some cases, it slightly changes how the textures themselves look as well. The best way I can describe it is the textures look more, just slightly more grounded into the material rather than just a very highly detailed skin. Now, I tried my best to capture at least some in-game comparison footage, but it was really hard to do. Honestly, the screenshots on the mod page itself do a far better job of showcasing exactly what the mod does. Overall, I wouldn't say this mod is outright better than something like HD Rework Project or Zilla Monsters mods. All the mods enhance textures in the game and make it look better. Whatever the case is, this point might be moot because you can actually run the mods together to an extent like I do where you could run HD Rework Project and then work in a few of Zilla Monster's textures to fill in the blanks, and then run ETO at a higher priority so it overrides any conflicting mods. This is all detailed in the pinned posts in the mod page itself, and I also explain it in more detail in my basic modding guide. Now, like most texture enhancement mods, ETO has no requirements, and it comes in two variants, a 2K variant, and a 4K variant, of which you pick one or the other depending on how much VRAM you can spare. My general recommendation for any texture enhancement mod is to go with the 2K version if you have 12 gigs or less VRAM, and then you can go for the 4K version if you have 16 gigs or more. If you have between 12 to 16 gigs, you probably need to do some trial and error to see what you can get away with. All right, and that's it for the general visual mods. Next, we have a couple of advertisement mods, and both mods are by the same author, Emery HQ. And the first of the two is Enable Advert Animations. And I absolutely love this mod. What it does is it enables more ads to be animated. So, to elaborate, as far as I understand it, there are a whole bunch of ads in the game that are actually animated ads. 
meaning the darn things actually move. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, the game displays a lot of these ads as just static ads in most areas of the game. Now, I personally have over 1300 hours in this game, probably 1400 by now, and I have only ever seen a couple of ads even move. So you can imagine my surprise when I installed this mod, and not to sound overly dramatic, but Night City kind of came alive. Now, aside from having no mod requirements, the best part about this mod is it is compatible with any ad replacer mod that I am personally aware of. It works standalone as well, on the vanilla game, on the vanilla ads, you don't need to install any other ad mods for this one to work. It's definitely a great addition to the game. And also by Emery HQ, we have always best quality. Now, I know I put this in the ad section, but that's mainly because A, it's by the same author, and B, I personally use it mainly for what it does to ads. In actuality, it really should be considered an essential LOD mod alongside the likes of NVF LODs, increased level of details distance, and improved vegetation LODs. All of which I covered in my previous mod recommendation video. As many of you probably know, levels of detail LOD has been a bit of a sore spot for many since CDPR kind of broke it a few patches ago. A lot of the older LOD mods no longer work, and with the ones that do work right now, you still do get the very occasional pixelated NPC, pixelated tree or building as you move around Night City. But especially annoying is folks having pixelated ads that either just flat out don't load properly, or it loads at max quality, but it only does it when you're really close to the ad, so it's quite jarring. Well, we now have another mod to assist with this problem. Simply put, what always best quality does is it tries to force the game to load only the highest resolution version of any given asset at all times. And this generally speaking applies to most UI elements, like the various menus, the map, the journal, inventory, as well as entities that display a video, image, or icon, i.e. ads. In other words, this mod addresses almost everything not explicitly targeted by the other three LOD mods I mentioned earlier. And it really does work, on my system at least. Of course, nothing is perfect in the game. I still do get the odd pixelated thing here and there, but it works well enough that I now have it permanently added as the fourth LOD mod, which I load up no matter what I'm doing. The footage you're seeing in the background shows mainly the effect it has on ads, because that is simply the easiest way to showcase what this mod does in video. Just know that the mod does quite a fair bit more than that. The mod claims to not affect performance at all, and I can confirm that on my system, I see absolutely no performance hit. But it's always good to remember that generally most things that increase the quality of what you see could result in a performance hit on some systems. So just be wary of that. Otherwise, always best quality has no mod requirements. It comes with two variants. The main file affects everything I mentioned earlier, whereas the ads only file, well, it just affects ads. Pick one or the other, not both. As far as compatibility goes, it is listed as compatible with most LOD mods as well as any ad mod, and I personally haven't experienced any compatibility issues with any of the 200 or so mods that I use. That said, I strongly recommend that you read the pin post in the post section of the mod page. It is kind of long, but there is important information there regarding compatibility with other mods as well as future patches. I try to give as much information as I can in my videos, but I can't cover everything verbatim for every mod. So always read the descriptions and pin posts on mod pages before downloading the mods. It helps save both you and the authors a lot of potential troubleshooting. Okay, so that was the ad section. Next, we have one of my personal favorite sections, Rain Mods. So I've previously covered Prem Rain by the Cyanide X, Sosuin's Improved Rain Mod, and I also showcased the Gits Rain effects in my Gits 3.x showcase. Well, today we have two very new Rain Mods to add to that list, and they are Nova Rain by the Cyanide X and Clear Rain by Akinex. 
And rather than do it individually like the other mods, I'm going to do kind of a side-by-side -side thing very similar to how I do my lighting mods because I think each of these rain mods brings something slightly different to the table. First we have Vanilla Rain for a baseline of what unmodded rain looks like in Cyberpunk. And then we have Nova Rain put alongside Vanilla Rain, and Nova Rain provides a more subtle overall rain effect that gradually fades into the distance. And the rain direction is also reactive, so we can see that the rain falls more vertical in this scenario compared to Vanilla. And then we have Clear Rain, which brings back the close-up raindrops, but it alters the transparency of the close-up drops to make them look better. And it also tones down the distant rain quite significantly, almost making it invisible in certain conditions. And for a refresher, here we have the Prem Rain Heavy Edition, which to date has been my preferred standalone rain mod, and this one brings much denser rain while maintaining some of the close-up raindrops. And last, we have Sosuin's Improved Rain mod, which tones down the distant rain a little, and significantly darkens the close-up raindrops. As you can see, it looks like it's almost black. Now, I'm just going to put the Git's rain effect up on screen and say that Git's rain effects is my personal go-to ENV-based rain mod, but it's kind of tough to compare to the rest of the rain mods for obvious reasons because it comes packaged with the Git's ENV. And the ENV significantly alters how the rainy weather state itself looks. Though for the sake of comparison, I would say Gits sort of combines the close-up rain from Clear Rain with the distant rain from Nova Rain. So yeah, those are the rain mods I have used personally. Hopefully this helps you pick the one you like best. None of them have any mod requirements, though you do need to pick just one to use. They can't be used together. Nova Rain has two variants, the main one and a rasterized one. The rasterized file fixes a flickering bug that occurs when running the main file without ray tracing. Nova Rain also has an optional ripples file which just reduces the size of the ripples made by rain when it hits wet surfaces. And this one is a standalone file that can be paired with any of the rain mods that I just talked about, including the Git's ENV. So if you want to reduce the ripple size, just install this along with whatever rain mod that you use. Now Clear Rain also has two variants. It has the main file and a second option that reduces distant rain visibility even more. Now I personally haven't tried the second file, though I can't imagine making it even more invisible. I mean, in some conditions, you already can't see the distant rain, right? So it's basically no distant rain and then just close up rain. Hmm. I don't know, maybe some folks like that. Anyway, so those were the rain mods. Next, we have a couple of immersion-ish mods. And the first one is DLC Liberation Protocol by Destiny BU. Now, what this mod does is it adds the various Twitch and GOG exclusive items and apparel to the game as discoverable or purchasable items. So rather than simply claiming those items by satisfying the requirements, and then having the items just appear in your stash, you are now able to find these items in specific locations as you make your way playing through Night City. Now, I really like what this mod does. I never got the Yasha sniper rifle myself because I believe it was a Twitch-related thing and then I missed it or something like that. But as you can see, I am now able to acquire it as part of a playthrough. A little bit more immersive, just adds a little more to the game. Now, of course, I won't be showing any other locations to avoid spoilers, but the description page itself does tell you where they are if you want to scroll all the way down. DLC Liberation Protocol has three requirements, Archive XL, Red 4 Extension, and Tweak XL, and it also requires you to own the Phantom Liberty expansion in order to acquire the Phantom Liberty items. And moving on, we have the H10 Mega Building Unlocked by Sammy1036 and DBK. And this mod unlocks almost all previously inaccessible areas in the H10 Mega Building Complex, including the lower market, which you could previously somewhat see, but not access. The H10 Building is where V's apartment is located, by the way, for those who don't know. 
The mod also adds a couple of stores to the main market area and apartment numbers to V's apartment. So this mod is purely an immersion thing for me. It's kind of like the Lizzie's Bar mod. It just adds a little more to Night City, expands on it a little. It's just nice to know that stuff works and stuff is there. And yes, there are a couple of minor known issues like NPCs clipping through objects in some instances and certain areas being kinda empty, but otherwise the mod works perfectly well as intended. H10 Mega Building Unlocked has three requirements, Archive XL, Cyber Engine Tweaks and Red 4 Extension, and it just has one file to download. Alright, and finally we get to the last mod in this video, and of course we have a bug fix mod. There's always going to be one or two of these after every patch, it seems. The Repeating Synaptic Accelerator bug fix is a mod by RMK1234, and it does exactly what the name says. It fixes a bug introduced in patch 2.11, which made the Synaptic Accelerator cyberware activate continuously as long as you are out of combat but still being detected by the enemy. Patch 2.12 did not fix this bug and it is still present in the game today. The effect of it activating can be quite jarring and annoying, so this is a nice fix until CDPR drops a patch that actually fixes it permanently. This mod has one requirement, tweak XL, and it has just one file. Alright folks, so that brings us to the end of the video. Maybe you've already heard of some or most of these mods, maybe you haven't. Either way, I hope it was interesting and helpful nonetheless. Remember to endorse the mods if you like them, submit bug reports to help authors improve their mods, and again, always read the descriptions and check for mod requirements. All the mods featured in this video will be linked in the description along with links to other useful videos I may have. The lighting mod featured in all the non-mod related gameplay footage in this video is the Edge LUT Vibrant Edition with the Edge ENV. Link in the description as well. Thumbs if you liked the video, sub if you want to get notified of my future uploads, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care folks.